Hi, I'm Bill Richards, Director of External Publishing for the AIA, and I'd like to welcome you all to Editors Connect. Um, we are uh, joined today by representatives from several AIA component architecture magazines. Uh, with the purpose to discuss regional design trends. And um, I just want to get, we have a lot to get through today, so we'll just start in with introductions and starting uh, farthest away from me. Hi, I'm Chris Hudson. I'm the editor of Architecture Minnesota Magazine out of Minneapolis. And I'm Doug Gordon, and I am editor-in-chief of Inform Magazine in Richmond. Hi, I'm Renee Loth. I'm the very new editor of Architecture Boston Magazine. Thank you. Um, so I'll just jump right in. Uh, I think that this is something that would um, has the, the broadest appeal, but uh, I wondered if you could each explain how your publication um, communicates uh, the value of architecture as kind of a, its core mission. Uh, yeah, big, big question. Um, well, <coughs> we do it through uh, sort of what magazines usually do it through. We, um, sorry, we, uh, we have our print magazine, but that's not all. We also have uh, a website now. And, uh, which houses a video competition that's become pretty popular in um, the Twin Cities. Uh, we, um, uh, we invest a lot in, in graphic design. We want to demonstrate the, the value of architectural design by in a magazine that uh, has uh, quality um, graphic design. And we try to have a variety of articles, uh, different kinds of ty types of articles to uh, keep uh, readers' interest. And uh, basically, we really aspire to be a newsstand magazine. Um, we editorially we don't want to speak just to architects and at any point anywhere in the in the magazine um, some of our advertisements uh, tell a different story uh, to readers but um, but generally speaking um, we're really trying to make this uh, 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 a consumer magazine that um, that tells a story of design and quality design um, in the Twin Cities and in Minnesota and beyond um, because no one else is covering it to the degree that we're covering it actually Chris would you just expand a little bit on the video competition because sure. it's a really I think sure. it's an innovative project yeah. Yeah, we, in, our, in our attempts to uh, reach out to the public and reach beyond our, our core audience of architects and uh, design professionals and, and decision makers in, in, uh, in Minnesota, we developed a, a video competition um, knowing that uh, just about anybody uh, feels comfortable with a camera, video, uh, a, a video camera on their phone now, and everyone's getting increasingly um, adept with uh, video editing software, and obviously with YouTube and Vimeo, we see... Uh, how much uh, traffic they get. So we, we made a, an architectural design video, uh, competition. Um, we started in uh, late 2010. The first competition was uh, March 2011. The second was last year. Um, we had 24 entries the first time, uh, 39 the second time. And we just gotten, um, you know, a hundredfold more visits to our website um, uh, based on the popularity of these really fun videos. Um, so that's one thing we're doing to, to uh, make a name for ourselves and make, make people more people aware of architecture Minnesota I would certainly agree with Chris that the idea of getting graphically rich material that is well presented is important the problem for me anyway is well for one I come from a technology and practice background and we try and reach out to the public as well we our readership is mostly members and also we have readers who are government officials so the message if you're trying to reach out to everybody you reach nobody so how do you focus that and I think the way we do it is to have certain sections that touch on technology and practice that is a little bit more understandable for the general public just to show what architects do beyond aesthetics. The importance there is to, sh is to tell people that architects know how to build sustainably, and they know codes, and you don't have to. All you need to do is hire an architect. That, I think, is how we bring that value. Um, I agree that it's a, a it's a great challenge to um, communicate to two audiences at once: membership and a general public of opinion leaders and policymakers and um, politicians. Um, that's sort of the mission that that I've brought on to Architecture Boston, which is a quarterly um, ideas magazine, a little bit different from some of the other um, component magazines. And by focusing on the ideas, it's one of the ways that we <coughs> bring forward the value of architecture into a larger community. These are, you know, ideas about sustainability, yes, but also um, just 
uh, different takes on, um, you know, the media or um, th this current issue's theme is sound. Um, just uh, many broad, uh, sort of a broad look at a, a single theme really has surprisingly, um, makes it surprisingly relevant to a larger audience. Um, you know, one of the things we're doing is trying to get architects um, more involved in the community conversation. And um, the, the chapter, the Boston Society of Architects, has got that as its a, a goal. And the magazine can really help be a bridge um, to sort of, or a translator, if you want, to translate architectees um, to that community of opinion leaders and policymakers that we want to reach. Well, I think you all bring up uh, you know, the critical ideas of audience and application and so forth. And I think these are also things that, that architecture firms struggle with in their practice, uh, just as magazines struggle with in their practice. Um, and so I wondered if you could all identify what you see as the biggest opportunity um, facing professionals and architects uh, in your regions. Well, since I have the microphone, um, you know, uh, we're in New England, where the the New England, the center of New England, the economic center and political center, both in Boston, and um, what we have going for us is education and healthcare. Um, they are. Uh, we're just going to take a little break here, so I'm not going to try to. The expo floor is now closed. I repeat, the expo floor is now closed. Please make your way to the nearest exit. We will see you tomorrow when the expo floor. Expo floor. Have a wonderful evening. Should I continue? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's, let's finish this off. Okay. I'm sorry. What we have going for us in Boston and New England is education and health care. These are institutions that are big, uh, big <coughs> excuse me, economic engines and employment engines, and there is a lot of growth in this area. Um, we have an article in this most recent issue of the magazine about healing spaces and designing for hospitals and how the clamor and, and uh, noise in most hospital environments is not healing, uh, not conducive to healing, and how designers can bring their intelligence and expertise to that problem. So, you know, this is another way that we can link what architects and designers do to um, a part of our a sector of our economy that is really um, key. Thank you. First, I want to apologize for being so bad that they had to close the floor here. Um, the for, for Virginia, it's a lot of military uh, uh, business. And right now, that is, thankfully, slowing down. So the economy, at the same time, is starting to pick up. Hopefully, there's going to be a balance there. Right now, we see multifamily residential as an opportunity. And Do you want me to repeat that for you? <laughs> um, Military, you were saying. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what to say. If the economy picks up, that's good. If we double dip, we're all, I almost said a bad word. So um, we are there to monitor what's going on and try to keep our members and our public assessed of that before, hopefully, before they know it. That's why they turn to our pages, is to find out what's going on. And keep reading. Um, <clears throat> I'm involved at uh, AI Minnesota. I'm on a task force that uh, is sort of mirroring what the, uh, the national organization is doing with its repositioning uh, effort, where we're trying to um, figure out how we need to tell our story uh, as a profession uh, to differentiate it from the other uh, building professions in terms of um, the immense environmental and economic challenges that uh, that businesses are facing uh, today. Uh, owners are interested in making their buildings more sustainable. Uh, homeowners are, um, and uh, they also uh, they also need spaces that work for them. And uh, we just we we're, we sort of feel like the the story hasn't been told well enough yet, or it's not resonating uh, yet. And so our magazine is um, is 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 trying to to capture that a, a little more. Um, uh, clearly and more succinctly and, and really by letting the clients tell more stories than, than architects. I mean, we can tell our own stories and promote our own, our own uh, value um, and we need to do that. But um, to find a really dynamic client um, at a really notable, uh, you know, um, 
people have achieved things in business and in commerce and, and let them speak for what, uh, what, the, what working with an architect brought to them. So we feel like that's a major challenge uh, this year and going forward, and we're happy that uh, the Institute is kind of doing the same thing, and we hope to uh, ride off their wake a little bit with that. Well, thank you. Chris, I thought you brought up a good point about sustainability. Another good point is accessibility, that is universal accessibility uh, that architects bring to the table. Another good point that is just starting to break out is what's called um, uh, well, healing buildings, a salutogenesis. Look it up on the web. Uh, it's a fairly new term. So with that, that. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you. Chris, Doug, and Renee, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.